Hey guys, and welcome back to part three of the inking and coloring process I usually go through whenever I'm designing a piece. Let's go ahead and get started. Here I'm getting my brush and I'm just setting up all my uh, definitive lines, the lines that I'm really going to be using for the for the artwork based off the template that we just created. Uh, so right now what I'm doing, I'm kind of getting my ideas down. Uh, I want to go with something kind of like a rattlesnake rattler. Um, growing up where I am, uh, we have a ton of rattlesnakes and uh, I just kind of wanted to get something there. It's always been kind of something that interests me. Uh, so I thought I'd just go ahead and use the use it for the horns. And here right now, you'll see me go through a different couple variations of kind of like how I want to style the hood and everything else. I'm just really kind of getting a feel for the piece, like what I really want to do with it and kind of where the piece is taking me. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just using a second layer on top of my line art layer. That way the second layer I can apply some color to it without having to worry about uh, going up to the lines. It You technically go up to the lines kind of like a coloring book, but uh, you really it's okay if you go too far uh, too far out or anywhere else because you can always go back to that layer and erase up to the line art uh, area just like I did there. And right now what I'm doing, I'm just kind of getting some little bit of hatchwork. Um, it's kind of a variation of that. It's kind of like a way of doing shading. Uh, hatching, like I said in the previous video, is when you use lots of multiple lines together to kind of give it a, a shadow effect. The closer and the more lines you have together, the more it gives you kind of like a dark area. The further apart and the less lines, it gives you kind of like a more uh, medium to a lighter range. So it's a, way, a real good way to get uh, depth and uh, and shadows whenever you're doing line art, uh, whether it's being traditional or uh, with Adobe Illustrator vector art. So pretty much, like I said, what I'm doing is I'm just dropping down, uh, you know, just to kind of give it a little bit of texture, uh, kind of like how Rattlesnake Rattler looks. It kind of has a little bit of a, I guess you can say, kind of like a spongy uh, feel to it. So I'm just kind of dropping everything down just to kind of get some three-dimensional uh, feel to it. Now, what I'm doing pretty much, I change um, usually my base color. My the first layer that I'll lay down is uh, kind of like the midtones. Like this is kind of the color that I want to use. Then I'll put some darker shades for shadow, and then some lighter shades for highlights. And then later on, what I'll do is uh, I'll use kind of like a transparent layer. Uh, what I do is I usually set it to darken or multiply, and bring uh, bring the opacity down to maybe like 75 percent, which is what I'm doing right here. So it's okay to go way past the lines because you're going to use your erase tool just to kind of erase what you don't want. And I'm leaving a lot of it uh, on the actual canvas just to kind of give it a watercolor effect. Uh, just so you can get kind of like some transparent shadows. Kind of like this is where shadows really form even though I've got some darks. It just kind of gives it a, another dimension. And as you can see I was pretty happy with the way that set, uh, turned out. So I went ahead and just copied and migrated it over and flipped horizontal. That way I can just reuse it. You can draw uh, both sides. <laughs> it is time consuming to do that and it's just a real quick way. Uh, what I love about digital art is you can copy paste, bring it over, and then you can make adjustment adjustments to both sides just to kind of make it uh, different from each other. But a lot of times uh, if it works, it works. Go for it. Just kind of bring it over and, and just go from there. Now here's kind of where the hatching uh, comes into play. Whenever I'm drawing with a ballpoint pen, this is kind of the way that I shade. I'll lightly hold the pen and I just start doing kind of like, a, I guess you could say chicken scratch. I just scratch the paper. Again, the, the closer and the more lines you have, the darker it gives you uh, an area, uh, in the area. The further apart the lines, it gives you kind of like a, a lighter, more kind of like um, transparent feel is what I'm kind of going for here. So again, this is just kind of hatching. Now, keep in mind there's lots of different uh, definitions and terminology for hatching uh, out there in the art world. Um, just to kind of keep it simple, I'm not going to go into all of them. I'll just say I'm using hatching or I'm using stippling. It's just a way to, so you can kind of be Okay, I got you. I know where you're going. Uh, but if you do want to look up, there's a ton of resources on uh, websites out there kind of displaying like 
the different variations of hatching and stippling. Um, honestly, once you start doing it, you, you, you really don't look at, okay, what variation am I doing? You're just, you're just going at it. You, you already have a feel for it and you're just doing what you want to on the, on the digital canvas or pen and paper or pencil and paper. But just keep in mind, guys, doing it this way, um, when I originally said I kind of had an idea, I wanted to use kind of like hair-like strands. This is what I was talking about. I wanted to kind of make the wings almost transparent, not give it a, a solid, solid color um, that you would normally see like in tattoos or comic book drawings or stuff like that. I kind of wanted to give the wings a transparent feel. So that way, if I put a background on, you can kind of see the background come through the wings, kind of like it's it's not a fully uh, hard lines with hard color. It's it's almost like a see-through effect. And it's just something that I was playing with with this piece. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. So this isn't the only way you can do wings. This is just a way that you can do wings if you ever are interested in doing uh, something like this. But also keep in mind when you do... Um, do uh, a piece with kind of like this kind of hatchwork, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the area. It's it's definitely one of those where you can start laying down the foundation and then you'll find yourself just constantly scratching at the uh, Wacom tablet or your pen and paper just to kind of get the, the look and the feel that you're really going for. I personally love doing it, but uh, I can see how a lot of people might get frustrated with like, nope, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> Now here what I'm doing is I'm going further on just to kind of get the general outline. Like I kind of see how things are flowing. Now I'm going to go back in and start dropping in some of the, some more line art where I kind of want things to be a little bit darker. And like I said, this is the first draft of the uh, pin uh, work that I want to do or the initial um, line art that I'm doing with it. So I'm just kind of getting everything set up the way that I want. So right now, even though he's got armor, I kind of want to get the feel for like, okay, here's where the nose, here's where the mouth, uh, the shape of the face and everything is going to go. Uh, the neck area, I went further out because I kind of want to give some shadow effects to the, to the inside of the cloak and the face itself. So I'm just quickly dropping everything kind of like this is where I would like it to go. Uh, once I get my basic uh, shapes and everything, my perspective, I'll start dropping the armor. Now with the armor, what I'm doing here is I'm using very broad strokes. And this is just kind of like a little bit of a trick that you can do if you're ever interested. Uh, what it's doing is with those broad strokes, I'm able to go back in instead of having to, to really try to play with my, my line art. Like, okay, does everything line up? Does it look like uh, symmetrical? Like it's staying a constant shape for armor. What I'm doing is I'm just going to use broad, broad strokes and just say, okay, here's where the actual roll for the armor is going to be. And then I'll just apply highlights and shadow after I change color to, to what I'm looking for uh, to that. So I can get it to where um, the highlight, uh, where it looks like armor, where it looks like a piece of metal. It's just a little trick that you can do. Now, this is one of the original sketches that I was going to work with. Um, I'm still working with... Uh, with the torso, the legs and everything, kind of having some different ideas. Like I said, I'm, I started seeing where the piece was taking me. So I kind of want to use shadow effects and just kind of get something different on paper. Uh, like I say, I draw very unorthodox. So I kind of see where a piece takes me. I don't normally go in with like, this is exactly how I want everything to go. There's sometimes in the middle of drawing, you kind of want to change things up because things just kind of start talking to you. Uh, personally, don't be afraid of that. If you start seeing the piece taking a different direction and you're liking that direction, go with it. Um, it sometimes can really turn out to, to work in your favor. And here what I'm doing, I'm kind of wanting to give him kind of like an older, kind of like a weathered skin look and also bring in the horns more into the head. Like the horns are actually coming out of his head and it's actually like going into the skull of his head. So I'm just kind of laying down all the shadow work and just kind of getting the foundation for the face done too. And like I said, uh, I wanted to really get him kind of like an old man reaper effect. So I'm going to put a lot more, um, 
I guess you can say, uh, wrinkles in his face and shading just to kind of give it like his skin is old, it's leathery. And when the more I kept looking at it, I keep thinking I might want to go with like a green or a blue, kind of like make the skin like almost like it's rotting. So I'm going to play with that a little bit later with a lot of different colors just to kind of see what really speaks to me. And the more I kept playing with everything, uh, I started looking at his cowl or his, uh, yeah, I guess that's what you would call it, his cowl or his hood, his shroud. Um, I started thinking instead of going with just cloth, it would almost be kind of evil if his cloth itself was leathery, like it was made of hard rawhide or hard kind of leather with um, kind of like movement of souls inside like a grim reaper like he has collected souls so uh, I started playing with that idea just kind of dropping uh, different little shapes like of trapped faces and skulls and everything inside the the cloak itself once I started kind of getting a basic outline I, I started going ahead and dropping like okay this is how it would kind of go so let's go ahead and work the shadows and the folds of the leather around some different shapes kind of like right here this skull so as I started playing with it I started to really like that idea so I figured hey let's go with it and again what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot more line uh, shading uh, than you normally would see in cloth and that's just because like I said I wanted to go with kind of a leather effect and leather when you really look at leather it's got a lot of it's not necessarily folds, but it's got a lot of uh, texture to it. So I just want a little bit more than what you normally would see with uh, cloth itself. Cloth usually kind of has more shade, less line. It's It's got more, um, I guess you can say, softness to it. So with the leather, I, I wanted to really kind of just give it like a really rough and it's almost kind of like an ink blot. Like if you've ever watched, a, a, oh God, I can't think of that comic book people are going to kill me for this but Warshack uh, if you've ever seen um, well we'll just we'll say the character's name is Warshack he's got an ink blot face on his uh, on his mask and it's always changing that's kinda like how some leather feels it's got almost like splatter everywhere on some rawhide so that's what I was going for now here what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and start dropping my base colors. Again, I'm going to play a lot with color. Um, I like to see what works. So while I'm going through the browns, I'm going to go ahead and start dropping some really uh, vibrant oranges just so I can see, okay, here's my highlights. Here's where I kind of want everything to, to really pop out to the eye. Uh, once I kind of had where my highlights were to my liking, I just dropped the opacity down, changed the color a little bit, and then I started working with the with the shadows, the the darks. And then as things continue on, what I'll do is I'll use another transparent layer, and then I'll use that transparent layer to kind of give it like a global shadow, like the light source is coming from here, and here's when the, the global shadow would actually be, which is right here where I'm starting. Now I usually kind of use uh, different shadow effects especially like if I'm going for a watercolor style effect watercolor doesn't go right up to the line if you've ever painted with that it's one of those where sometimes watercolor goes past it's not wrong it looks great uh, to my eye whenever I see like watercolor pieces I've always really enjoyed them it's one of those where the imperfections make it better almost that's why with this piece I'm not really worried like okay this shade line or this uh, shading area isn't going right up to my hard line art. I'm okay with that because I want kind of like a watercolor feel to this. And again like I said I was kind of thinking I'm going to go with a kind of like a blue variation for his skin. Uh, I want to do some shadow work to where there's kind of like a skull like featureous or, or feature in the shadows on his face which is why on the lips I kind of give it, gave it a little bit of like here's where teeth would be, here's where his nostril would be with the shadows just something different and here is where I was saying I was going to play with color I was going to keep the horns and the face and everything yellow 
Uh, I was kind of liking that, but with the, as much browns and the armor uh, being also kind of like a yellowish tint to it, I started thinking that might be a little bit too much brown and yellow. Uh, it's starting to become too much looking like it. Uh, it's starting to be a little bit too much the same tone. So I, I figured let's go ahead and keep with the blues. So I'll start switching that over and just kind of play with the leather. The rawhide isn't, usually isn't that dark. So I figured let's go ahead and play with everything and see where uh, the piece is going to take me. Now what I'm going to go ahead and start doing is start working on the rest of the armor. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get my base color and everything down. I've also lightened up on the blues and the browns in the leather itself. That way the armor and everything just kind of flows a little bit easier to the eye. And you can kind of see where things are taking shape and where they are going. Now here's where I'm also going to select the line art uh, with the... Uh, one of the tricks that I was talking about earlier, I'm just going to keep those really broad strokes and apply highlights and shadows to that. So it gives kind of like the rolled armor effect without actually having to go in there and draw each line and then color in. It's just a little trick that you can do. Um, it can be something that you like and it can be something that you don't. Most people sometimes would rather uh, draw out each portion that way they can color it in and get it really the the shape that they like or the the colors that they like this is just a little quick way to give you an idea like you can use thick lines and then fill in with highlights and shadows and then play around with the pads just to make sure it, it covers the way that you want so you can just drop down uh, some real quick highlights and then go back in with pads which is what I'm doing here and give it that contour that you really want and then here what you're gonna see is I'm just kinda masking out where I'm gonna use uh, put the hands and everything I'm not really focusing too much on the knuckles or everything else. What I'm going to do is I just kind of want the layout for it. And then I'm going to go back in and use uh, the blues that I'm using in the skin to give the the knuckles and the wrinkles and everything, his fingernails and stuff like that. So this is pretty much kind of like, okay, here's where every, I want everything to go. And don't be afraid if you ever start dropping something and you don't really like the direction that it's going in don't be afraid to race it and just restart over like there on the hands I didn't like how the fingers were really uh, forming so I went ahead and just erased the whole area and started re redoing it real quick and now because I, I needed a break what I started to do was like okay let's go ahead and start getting back to the feathers uh, let's have some fun with that so what I did is I created a new layer underneath uh, my midtones and I'm using a lighter uh, shade of gold just to kind of give you some highlights. And I'm using the same technique that I did earlier uh, when I originally drew them. I'm just doing quick and really broad strokes with hatching or uh, against the Wacom. And I'm just really quickly scratching. Once I got enough shadows in, I went ahead and just got a really dark um, um, a color and went ahead and just uh, started doing my shadow work too. And that does it for today, guys. Um, we will be continuing with this piece. Uh, I'm kind of seeing some stuff that I'd like to do with it, but I'm just going to see where it takes me. Um, but right now, I went ahead and changed the horns and the face to blue, and I kind of kept a little bit of a different shade of brown on the on the arms. It's just something that I'm going to play with and see where, where I kind of like everything going. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If y'all have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments, and as soon as I see them, I will get to them. Um, until the next time, guys, have a good day. Take care.